Today we're talking about Verdansk returning in about 90 days. We've kind of estimated about March 10th. We still haven't got an official date. We know it's going to be early next year, but I thought it's a, a, there's a bunch of things that we could talk about in regards to the state of the game, kind of where things are going, what the content looks like between now and then, and then also like what are the expectations for Verdansk? Because I think it's going to be a big deal. And especially it's kind of bad if where the game is in a terrible situation where people are going about deleting the game, uninstalling, those types of things. Uh, because at the end of the day, it, it benefits the game to have more players on there. Obviously, individually, it helps because obviously there's more views to go around. But I think when the game is in a better spot and it's doing more economically for the studio then they're able to go out of their way to do more fun things for the community and just leads to a better overall game. I thought we could talk about multiple of those things, but speaking of deleting the game, we do have a sponsored segment, which we'll do right now. Today's video is brought to you by Delete Me, a subscription-based service that helps to remove your personal information off the internet. And they aim to reduce your digital footprint by removing tons of personal information that's available online, whether it's your name, your phone number, your address, your email, and various other information about you from hundreds of data brokers that sell your information daily. After signing up, users fill out some basic information so they know what you want to remove off the internet. And then going forward, you'll have continuing monitoring and removal every three months they'll make sure that your information is not reappearing on these broker sites if found they'll send an opt-out request to remove that information again continually maintaining your privacy over time you'll also receive regular reporting to give you detailed information on the data that's found where it's located and then the efforts taken to remove it delete me offers different plans based on the number of people covered individual couple family and subscription duration and for 20 percent off check that link near the top of the description thank you to delete me for sponsoring today's video welcome back so i think one of the things to talk about is what are the realistic expectations because i know a lot of you guys that are watching these videos it's either fit into a couple different camps one you hate the game and you play it every single day which is the average cod player they hate cod every single day but they play it every single day and then there's other people that venture out, do variety games. They play new things when they come out. I play tons of variety games. I think I've played around 30 different games this year. Most recently, Bellatro, which is up for game of the year. The side note, we'll probably dabble in PoE 2, whatever. There's a lot of other games out there. People mix it up and then they come to COD and play COD when it is good. Uh, and then there's other people that really haven't given COD a chance for a number of different reasons and a number of different issues whether they like the original warzone one before warzone two and they haven't come back maybe they tried to come back during mw3 they liked it and then when they changed the game again they don't like the buggy mess maybe people are really enjoying the current version of black ops 6 integration but are still kind of getting over some of the different issues with the network and a lot of these other issues so realistically um, depending on where you're at, it's going to determine your different expectations of what you want. And I think this is where it gets a little bit confusing because a lot of people talk about the concept of OG Verdansk. And I don't think people realize if you actually went true OG, how many features would be gone. You only had five plates, no way to hold more. Like if you really wanted to go OG, OG. And then when you start having conversations with different people, you're going to get slammed or you can Yeah, you got slammed. When you have conversations with different people, what inevitably happens is they go, well, obviously not though that OG. And it's like, depending on what people want from the game, there's different areas of the game that could be changed. Whether it's how the contract works, it's the lack of zips. Do they want it to be hard to get up into a building? You gotta climb 19 stairs? Uh, or do you want a zip to be able to get to the top? Or do you want a balloon or a drone to go ahead and go to the top? For some people, depending on how they utilize it, they may or may not like it. Do you want one shot sniping at infinite range so you can get a 2,000 meter long shot with the car 98K? For some people, worst version of COD ever. For others, the greatest. So it's like, where does it stop? Do we go to 100 HP so we kill, get killed a lot faster? It's like whatever your health is when you respawn in Resurgence with only two plates, that is the standard. Like that would be your standard health and that's equals 150. So I think there's a lot of these things. It's like, what is the give and take for a lot of people? Realistically, I like the systems currently in place. I wish the mantling where you do the ledge hang, probably gone. I wish we had unlimited tax sprint or slide canceling reset our tax sprint. I think that would be kind of awesome. 
I, I think there's a uh, some other ideas to maybe increase the bullet velocity of the weapons because I think one of the things in Warzone 1 that was so good is that there was one-shot sniping, but you can relatively easy counter one-shot sniping with one-shot or like multi-shot low recoil shooting. And we had different metas like the Kilo, the Growl, the M4, and a lot of these lower recoil guns. And then there were some other variations of it where maybe we had the M13, super fast fire rate, relatively low recoil, the Ram, super fast fire rate, predictive recoil pattern, but a little bit more of a skilled gun to use. And then we had a little bit higher skilled, which was like the Amax. And we had significantly easier guns to use because of the bullet velocity. And although you might get sniped on occasion and you get pissed off because you can get sniped across the map, you can still revive, you can still crawl to cover, those types of things. Um, but it allowed for both like metas, the sniper meta and the long range meta essentially to be able to compete with each other. And when they're both competing, they're both good. And what they've done recently is they've kind of made them both trash. Um, the long range meta, although they increased the bullet velocity recently, it's still not up to par compared to what it was back in the day. And the sniping, it's not either. There's a couple snipers that can do infinite range one shot sniping, but then you end up with like 800 bullet velocity and the gun's hard to use. It's not fun and it feels like trash to use. And if that's your meta option, you're kind of in a terrible spot. And I think this is really one of those things where it's like how much nostalgic glasses do people have on? I've watched gameplay recently. I've gone back and played 2019 to see how it feels. And I think there are 100% elements of the current version of the game that are smoother. Um, but MW 2019 was by far snappier. So if they can manage to make it snappier while utilizing the, the tools that we have now, it's like they could take the best of both worlds. So I, I think if they can manage to execute it, but the, the launch of this integration has been really lackluster in the sense that it's had a lot of issues. I think the core gameplay, like I said, I'm glad it's back to being streamlined, potential to be fun again uh, on a regular basis. I wish vehicles had a little bit better mobility. So it felt like the Vernance vehicles. Verdansk 84 and Caldera. The audio, like what is the audio going to be like? When did we have the best audio? I can ask you all and you guys can comment different things and because there's not a one right answer depending on your headset, your play style, what part of the maps you play on, what type. Like there's a lot of variables to it. Personally, I felt like around Caldera was when we probably had the best audio and then when they switched to the engine, it kind of like busted a lot of things and never really been able to fine tune it back to it was even though caldera wasn't a great map i think a lot of the things in place were maybe overdone like the movement it's like they went full movement and they went too far with it warzone 2 they went too far the other way and it's like you really can't go too far the other way and i'm going to actually insert a section here explaining this a little bit more in detail with a little bit of graphs so you guys can see that so one quick thing i did want to touch on with the hype over time is depending on like let's say like the game can't be perfect for everyone so it's got to kind of find a balance maybe if you're a sniper maybe you loved the meta during this time but other people were less happy maybe you like snake shots and that was peak war zone that can in in contribute to that maybe you like the growl or the bruin meta uh, or maybe you liked the original M4. Maybe you liked it when we got into Caldera and the insane stim movement. And there's different people that are here that will overlap with the other people, but not always, right? They might have issues here where it doesn't always overlap. And maybe between these two groups, they would have much more overlap and they would agree on things. But the, the, the community is so vast and so large that it would be nearly impossible to even get a majority to agree. And more often than not, I can say this is awesome. Best thing COD's ever done. These guys over here will hate it with everything in their soul. And that's perfectly fine. Later on, they might be a riot shielder and go, you know what? The riot shielder is amazing. I love everything about the riot shield. Keep buffing the riot shield. And I would be like, heck no, I hate the riot shield. And that's just kind of how it goes depending on preference. Maybe you hate melee. Maybe you love melee. Sniping, not one-shot sniping. Fast TTK, low TTK. Loadouts, looting. You know, and so on and so on and so on. And there's probably about 100 different bullet points where you can get people to agree and disagree and disagree to agree and, and agree, agree to disagree. And it's just kind of how it goes when the community is so large. End of day, COD's performing well financially. 
Uh, I just wish the game was working in order, but let's get back into it. Done with the graph section. I, I think uh, this also opens up a lot of uh, other issues. Uh, I know one thing is that this will be one of the last chances for them to bring new players back. The diehards, ride or die, games broken or not, a lot of people just play COD. Like I said earlier, if they hate COD, they, they're going to play it daily. It doesn't matter if they hate it. It's busted. They do not play anything else. Luckily for sometimes people that have been gaming longer, they have a little bit more variety in the mix and it allows you to have a little bit more creative freedom in how you spend your free time other than just raging at COD, which could be pretty rough. Bringing back Verdance gives an opportunity to bring back new players. And although people will claim the game's dying or dead, like it's not even remotely close to dead or dying. On average on Steam, just for perspective, Steam represents about five to 7% of the player base based off uh, the sales data when we had the acquisition from Xbox um, of, of Activision, there was a little bit of acquisition details and it's estimated somewhere between five and 7%. Myself. When the, the, the player count on Steam sits around 155,000, that's roughly 2 million people concurrent. Lowball, not even counting the Xbox Game Pass that have incorporated and people are playing on there now because they get access to Black Ops 6 multiplayer and zombies we don't really know how what percentage is playing on warzone versus multiplayer versus zombies bo6 as a whole has performed better than previous uh multiplayer titles and zombies for sure in a very long time maybe since bo3 for zombies uh, but you you kind of end up in a weird situation where this is like the last draw for a lot of people and i know some of you guys have those friends where maybe they do play variety games and they're looking for something to bring them back and maybe they know Verdansk is on the horizon and they're thinking about giving the game a shot again because they don't maybe like Resurgence. They like Battle Royale and they like the way Verdansk played when it originally came out. Which version? Maybe Verdansk OG with Nakatomi Tower Summit. Like, was it that version? Um, and where does everything else fit into it? Does it gonna have all the quality of life improvements that we had? I would expect them to be there but everyone's expectations are a little bit different. I think they could do really something cool if they manage to get it going in the right spot uh, because they can do something like what Fortnite's doing with their OG map where they're basically running the seasons back to back and they're doing all the changes that they did over those time periods. Warzone could definitely do the same thing, Verdansk, and then these POI changes and they could happen every other month or every month and we can actually have gra rapid changes on the map and when we get the new map, if it's Avalon, then cool. Does that bring in the conversation of map rotation, big map rotation, the way we have it currently with uh, Resurgence, like where there's been multiple maps over the time. And uh, it kind of starts a lot of those types of conversations with how things will work and what the expectations are. So I don't know. What are your guys' kind of thoughts? I feel like they have a lot of work to do. It's possible. I think a lot of the... Oh, there he is. 1v1v. Whoa, look at... What were you shooting at, dog? <laughs> Holy... And there it is. GG's. Oh, no. 1v1. He threw the chopper. He's on top of the, the building. Yeah, he's on top of the tower. He's got to jump off, though. His gas mask is about to run out. Finish your mission. Take him down. Oh, did you get him? Ah, uh, free blah. There is one little last thing I did want to touch on. Um, I, I didn't. It, it's not going to take a full game to go through, so I did want to talk a little bit about it. Is that it, it, as a creator, it kind of puts me in this wonky situation because I make content because I think it's fun. I get to engage with the community. There's a lot of positives. Obviously, it comes with the side of negatives sometimes because there are things that are associated with it. But I don't really like going out of my way to be negative. So sometimes when I do. I'm just being honest. I'm going to be honest regardless. And I would much rather be happy about the state of the game. So they need to fix it. Um, than to just whine and complain about it every single day. Like all that time spent being miserable. I could be grinding other games that I enjoy, which I definitely do. Whether it's destiny previously lost arc. Like I said, Bellatro, POE, the list goes on and on. Maybe I want to do Indiana Jones. There's so many different games to play and I will definitely play them. Uh, and what that ends up leading to is when the game is good, I'm going to make more content. I can make content about more things and more variety uh, and not get weighed down by the toxicity that it is to create content. People still play this game. Like you're clearly in the comment section, dude. Like 
yes people watch this game comment on it and and you're playing the game right now saying this game is dead it's kind of the strangest thing it happens in other communities too they get pretty toxic but cod is just like the craziest <laughs> i feel like the craziest community there is we have a lot of great people in our community and i appreciate you guys' support if there's not as many uploads it is what it is i'd rather do less uploads than just me whining and complaining about the game every single day we did that during warzone 2 and it was not fun warzone 3 got significantly better um it still had its issues with the meta uh we're in a pretty good spot here in terms of like things like the foundation being there they just got to get rid of these hiccups with the, the the servers the visual recoil and some of the mobility penalties that we have and it could be like the best version of warzone that we've had even though some people will be like, no, it's terrible. Everything's terrible. Day one war zone or nothing. It is what it is. You can't make everyone happy. Regardless, I'm going to be happy doing what I do. Regardless if the game is good or bad, I'm going to do me, right? It's just kind of how it goes. 36 years old, you don't get weighed down by some of the dumb things that are going on. But it is what it is. Appreciate all the support. Thank you guys for watching. If you made it to this point, hit the like button, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.